Praise the Lord this morning. And good morning. Good morning, saints. It's a good morning. Hallelujah. To praise and worship God today and to come before his presence with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's you know that song? Rainy day. Amen. Amen. Rainy. It's rain. Rain since two this morning. Wow. I got up at one thirty. Praising the Lord, worshiping God, reading, praying. He's sending rain to confirm his inheritance. Amen. Once again. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's enter into his gates. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice, rejoice for, for he has made me glad. glad. He has made me glad. For he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. He is good. The 20th of December. We praise God for that. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, thank you today. Thank you for this word you've placed in our heart. For your children today, O oh God. Oh, God, you know the needs in the heart of every individual that will hear this message today. Sharon and I and everyone else, Lord, that will come and listen, that you will draw to this broadcast to hear your word for them this very day, oh God. We bless you and praise you, Lord. We are on your road today, Lord. We want to stay in the narrow path. Keep us, Lord, in the narrow way. Let us not deviate to the right hand or to the left, O oh God, but go forward in you where you have us going forward in the Spirit, waging a good warfare against all the principalities and dominions and wickedness, spiritual wickedness in high places. O oh God, we are seated with you, Jesus, in heavenly places. Hallelujah. And from there we wage a good warfare. Hallelujah. And Lord, we ask you today to stomp down the devil under our feet. Anyone that the devil's using today, Lord, to come against your word being spoken here or anywhere else, we ask you, Father, to demolish it, hallelujah, and crush it and throw it down under our feet. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. To hear the word, amen. to receive the word, and to act on the word. Hallelujah. Praise to God. To be a doer of the word doer. that is heard. Amen. That's what the Lord wants us to do. Right. Be Receive it and be blessed. And be a doer. Right. And be strengthened. Amen. Hallelujah. In his might. Hallelujah. Today's message alone, yet not alone. Not alone. Okay. We know several people that, and we've known several over the years who are alone. But yet, you're not alone. You're not alone. Might look like you're alone, but you're not alone. Sharon and I. We are together here, sitting here, but sometimes together we feel very alone. Mm -hmm. We can feel very alone. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you something. We always come back to center. We're not alone. We're not alone because Jesus is with us. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. His word says, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. The devil's a stinking, filthy liar, I'm telling you. That's right. Hallelujah. Today we're going to read this devotional from Streams in the Desert. Now, I want to say this. If you want a copy of this devotional, you write us, the Kings Road 2000 at gmail.com, and we will send you this devotional, okay? It doesn't cost anything to send it, and we'll send it to you. Just write a note, say, I'd like to have that devotional, and it goes through every day of the year, okay? It even has the leap year, so that's good. February the 29th. <laughs> So praise you God. You have that link? Yeah, I've got, yeah. I've got it. I've got okay. the folder. I can just email it to you. It won't uh, take but a second. Okay. You just okay. download it, and there you got it. Praise the Lord. Well, the scripture that's with this devotional today is pretty awesome scripture. It's Jesus is speaking here in John sixteen thirty two. Amen. Jesus was a man of sorrows, wasn't he? Amen. Acquainted with grief. Acquainted with grief. Jesus <coughs> felt that aloneness more than anyone else that's ever been born on the that's face right. of the earth, okay? Because he was different than everybody else. Yes, Amen. and he was pure. So everything that he uh, sensed and 
what happened with him, it was magnified, magnified amen, like a amen. thousand times because of his purity. So he felt it a thousand times more than we do. Amen. Amen. So he knew what being alone was. He knew what being rejected was. He knew what being left was because his disciples all left him. Man. At his greatest Time hour of need. of need, they left him. John sixteen thirty two. Behold, this is Jesus speaking. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. Hallelujah. Isn't that a powerful, Hallelujah. That's such a powerful verse. Woo, we need that today. That is such a powerful verse. Read it again, Sharon. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, and every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. Hallelujah. What a wonderful even promise that is for yes, us, you know. Yes, that's right, that's right. And this devotional, you know, it's very powerful. Hallelujah. Because there's a separating going on in this hour. Amen, talk about it. God is separating. Hallelujah. He's separating all of his true children unto himself. That's right. Oh, preach it. Come and on. That can really mean a total separation from practically everybody. And that's the truth. Amen. Except the true body of Christ. Because I'm going to tell you something. There's not a separation in the true body of Christ. Amen. There's a oneness. There's a oneness Hallelujah. and it's going to be more magnified as the days go on. That oneness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This devotional. It is certainly unnecessary to say that turning conviction into action requires great sacrifice. It may mean renouncing or separating ourselves from specific people or things, leaving us with a strange sense of deprivation and loneliness. Therefore, the person who will ulti ultimately soar like an eagle to the heights of the <coughs> cloudless day and live in the sunshine of God must be content to live a relatively lonely life. There are no birds that live in as much solitude as eagles. The Lord talks a lot about eagles in the Word, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. For they never fly in flocks. Rarely can even two eagles be seen together. And a life that is dedicated to God knows divine fellowship, no matter how many human friendships have had to be forfeited along the way. Hallelujah. God seeks eagle people. For no one ever comes into the full realization of the best things of God in his spiritual life without learning to walk alone with him. Hallelujah. That's, that's, that's good. Awesome, isn't it? Yes. We see Abraham alone in the land of Canaan while, while Lot lived among the cities near Sodom. Ooh. Moses, although educated in all the wisdom of Egypt, had to spend 40 years alone with God in the desert. And Paul, who was filled with all the knowledge of the Greeks and who sat at the feet of Gamaliel, was required, after meeting Jesus, to go immediately into Arabia to learn of the desert life 
with God. Now see, Hallelujah. these are all examples because what was Jesus was immediately driven of the Spirit of God into the wilderness. Into the wilderness right. after he was commissioned. Alone. Amen. Alone. That's to right. be alone. To be tempted of the devil. To be tempted I'm telling of the you devil. right now, there's a word in that. Let me talk about that because God has put some of His people recently alone. Okay, alone. Well. It's because God is proving you. God is testing you. Hey, just remember, one day at a time. One day at a time, okay? Don't think about tomorrow. Yesterday's gone forever. Any mistakes you made yesterday, any falling off of the road, repent for it. Go forward today in Christ and let him do his work. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. This is an awesome deal here. Hallelujah. May we allow God to isolate us. But I do not mean the isolation of a monastery. It is in the experience of isolation that the Lord develops an independence of life and of faith so that the soul no longer depends on the continual help, prayers, faith, and care of others. So what does he want? What is it saying in that? He's wanting us to be completely dependent upon him amen. amen completely dependent upon him jesus in his humanity was completely dependent on the father on the father amen. see he's our example we always go back to that he's amen. our example that's exactly right amen. to be dependent on the father on the father hallelujah hallelujah the assistance and inspiration from others are necessary and they have a place in a Christian's development. But at times, they can actually become a hindrance to a person's faith and welfare. See, there comes a time when you're not mm. a baby no more. Amen. When the Lord wants to grow us up in Him. That's right. Amen. And really, the way to do that is to be clinging to Him with all that we have. Amen. All our might. Hallelujah. All our souls. Right. All our mind. That's right. To cling to the Father. Hallelujah. Cling on. Hallelujah. Because He's the one that has the sustenance for everything in our life. That's right. He's the answer. That's right. People are not the answer. That's right. Circumstances are not the answer. God is the answer. Hallelujah. That's right. He wants us to depend on him. And you know what? He gets very jealous when we don't. When we depend on others for something only he can give. That's right. That's right. That's right. Peace comes from him. Amen. Amen. He's a jealous God. That's right. He's a jealous God. Amen. You know, and even in the marriage covenant, <coughs> the Lord puts... His heart in the wife and the husband. Amen. His heart. Because the marriage covenant with Christians should be an example of Christ's love for his church. Amen. And the father is very jealous. So if there's things going on in that a marriage where the husband or the wife are not being solely toward each other, that their eyes are only on each other, that their heart is only toward each other, then a, a jealousy starts to rise up. Mm -hmm. Because is this what God wants in the marriage? No. No. So what is that scripture that talks about? Uh, the man that the jealousy burns in the man. Why was the jealousy burning in the man? Because the wife was not, she was being unfaithful. Right. That's right. See? So the Lord speaks of these things in his word. He is a very jealous God. And there's going to be a jealousy as well. Mm -hmm. A zeal. Use that, that word zeal. Because that, that the word zeal, you're zealous over the union right. that God has yeah. put together. See? 
because Hallelujah. he's saying, hey, your eyes are not supposed to be on anyone else that's right. but me, that's says right. the Father. Amen. And that's exactly the way it's. he wants it in the marriage. Because what is the marriage? A sign right. of his love for his church. Right. So when his church starts looking elsewhere. Which and, they're doing And out their there. heart right. is elsewhere. And they're following elsewhere. He says, I'm jealous of this. Right. I'm angry. He burns right. with jealousy over that. That's right. Well, don't you think the same thing's going to happen in a true marriage put together by God? Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, it is. Right. Because something's wrong from one side or the other. That's right. Amen. The, the other person is looking in all other directions other than the wife or the husband. That's right. So that what the Bible speaks of jealousy will rise up. Why? Because something's wrong there. Right. That's right. Now, remember, this is a covenant between the Lord and his church, an example of the Lord's love for his church. That's right. So this is going to happen. And, you know, he wants us unto himself alone. That's right. That's right. All for himself. That's right. And that covenant should be as well. All for each other unto their self right amen see that's a that's covenant right. that's exactly. what god expects and that's what his true way is that's right so being alone unto god hallelujah is what this devotional is about amen god knows how to change our circumstances in order to isolate us and once we yield to him and he takes us through an experience of isolation, we are no longer dependent upon those around us. Although we still love them as much as before. You see that? He knows how to create the circumstances to put us in an isolation toward him. And what does it say here? Yield. Mm-hmm yield to him in that isolation because he's doing it amen <laughs> he takes us through an experience of isolation why so that we are no longer dependent upon those around us and we are so attached and fastened to him mm -hmm. and that's what he wants amen amen then we realize that he has done a new work within us and that the wings of our soul have learned to soar in loftier air, just like the eagles. We must dare to be alone in the way that Jacob had to be alone for the angel of God to whisper in his ear, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel. Hallelujah. In the way that Daniel had to be left alone to see heavenly visions. And in the way that John had to be banished to the Isle of Patmos to receive and record the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him. You know, and also Daniel was in the lion's den alone. Right. Wasn't he? He was alone. But Other not than, alone. But not alone. That's right. <laughs> because God He was, had the lions in there with him. <laughs> yeah, and the lions were there. It kept him warm all night. Praise God. But the angel closed their mouths. Amen. And the angel is closing the mouth of the lion today. Amen. That destroying lion. That's oh, right. Oh, hallelujah. That's right. And then it says, right there, the last part. He has trodden the wine press alone for uh, us amen he's gone before us in other words isaiah 63 3 amen therefore are we prepared for a time of glorious isolation rather than to fail him it says now that last part read that again that's a question so we need to go through that last part again therefore are we prepared for a time of mm. glorious isolation mm -hmm. rather than to fail him Ooh. see yeah because this is this is happening today god like sharon was saying and what like the holy spirit speaking today god is 
taking his people more and more, gathering them together. Okay, see, he's gathering. He's already getting. He's already got all the tares. A lot of the tares all bundled up, and they're they're still being bundled up by the angels. Okay, the tares are to burn, and then he's gathering his wheat into the barn. You see. And first he does it spiritually. And I'm telling you right now, he's doing it. Mm -hmm. He is doing it. He yeah. is doing it. He is doing it. There is no doubt about it. <coughs> Pardon me. And we have to be willing vessels for the Lord to take up, to use for his glory, whatever he wants to do, wherever he wants to put us, wherever, whatever he wants us to go, whatever he wants us to say. Okay. If God gives us a charge, saints, if he gives you a charge today to do something, he's not going to tell you to do something and then not be there to help you do it Amen. and not be there to supply for what you need to do or whatever's going on, okay? Amen. He's there. So when God speaks a word to you and he says, I want you to do this or that, you say, thank you, Lord. I need your help. Come on, Lord. Let's go do that. Amen, Lord. Let's, let's, yes, Lord, I will be obedient to you. See, I will walk with you today in obedience. I will walk with you today in mercy and in grace and love. And just thank you, God, for everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, we really need to get this deep in our heart because uh, we're in the time of this right now. We are. We're in the time of this where the Lord is separating us unto him in a more deeper way. To be alone with him and one-on-one -on -one with him. Because how are we changed? We're changed by the Spirit of God. Right. From glory to glory. As we behold his face. Hallelujah. We're and, saying changing in his image. And Hallelujah. And cry out to him. Really cry out. And you know God knows the, the cry. <laughs> Amen. In our heart. He knows how deep that cry is. He right. knows how true that cry is. Amen. To be everything he wants us to be. And he comes in, he swoops down like the eagle. And he comes in, and he answers that cry of the heart. Praise his holy name. And you know, I remember in that little movie, War Room, they used this little old lady's Bible that was all worn. And I mean, you could tell she had used that Bible over the years. And... They were talking to her about what she felt like was the key to her relationship with Jesus Christ. And it was being alone with him in the early morning hours. Wow, that's great. In his word. Amen. And speaking to him as she sat at her kitchen table and looked out the window, she would talk to Jesus. Talk to Jesus, amen. And read his word and draw close to him and until you know there was such a closeness there between her and her lord it was like it was but a minute second where when the time came she just crossed over amen she just crossed right over into the arms of jesus she was so close to jesus that's right amen and you know what in listening to her there was, nothing else mattered to her Right. She was so doused in the presence of God. Right, it was simple. And it so was close simple. to yeah. him. Amen. You Amen. know, that nothing else worried her or upset her or <laughs> anything because her relationship yeah. with him was so real and so true. It was like having him right there at the kitchen table. And he was right there. And at the he kitchen. was. <laughs> and you could just see her face shone with the glory of God. Hallelujah. You could tell she had been with Jesus. <clears throat> This is what he's doing in this hour. He's drawing us close to him. Amen. He's saying, come and dine. Oh, hallelujah. Come and dine with me. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I was reading in the Word the other morning, and uh, when Jesus was resurrected, and he came to visit his d disciples, and he was on the shore, he was cooking, fish over the fire he was cooking them a meal to me this is all symbolic he was cooking them a meal and they looked out and they looked there and they realized 
that was Jesus. Right. John said, it's the Lord. It's the Lord. <laughs> and so he jumps into the water and heads on over there Peter and everything. Did. Peter dove in. And he got up there and Jesus said to him, come and dine. Come and dine with me. Right. Come and sit here and dine with me and eat with me and speak to me and have fellowship with me. You can tell Jesus anything. You can. You can. You can tell him anything and he hears you and he will answer you. He will answer. He, will. he never fails. He doesn't. He never does fail. Never and has failed mm -hmm. either of us. Mm -mm. I remember that night I was walking home from Galveston. I lived in Houston and I was in Galveston and I was just a kid and I was so scared. It was getting cold. I was afraid. I was just saying, God, please help me. God, please help me. Please help me. And then when I got to the interstate where the where the island ended, Galveston Island, this white truck just pulled up beside me. And a guy was in, in there. He had long, dirty blonde hair and a big brown beard. And he had a big white dog in the back of his truck. And it was an older model truck. He said, you need a lift? I said, yeah. I got in. Took me all the way to my house. Then he slept in the garage, and the next morning, he took off. That was my angel. That was an angel sent from God to pick me up and take me home. I know it. So God hears you. You going through something today, just call out. Jesus hears you. Amen. I guarantee it. Amen. There's no doubt about it. You know, he's really been speaking to me about the most important thing in his body right now the most important thing is drawing close to him drawing unto his heart you know I think about that little lady now she she actually died before that movie was completely well they showed her the movie before she passed away yeah she saw the movie yeah and when I think of that little lady you know and just how precious time with the Lord was to her mm-hmm and how she spoke as if Jesus just was right there physically with her. That's what the Lord wants. Mm -hmm. See, when we get our eyes in other directions, it prompts the jealousy of God. That's right. It really prompts his anger. Right. When we get off the path, when we start straying off the path somewhere else, or our eyes, what does he say in the word? Keep your eyes straight ahead. Mm -hmm. Don't look to the right. Don't look to the left. Well, why? Why? Because if you're looking to the right or the left, you're not looking straight ahead to the Lord. So it's like looking somewhere else. Amen. At someone else. To someone else. Right. No, he says. Look unto me. Look unto me. I have the answers. Right. I have everything you need. I'm the one that supplies. I'm the one that protects. That's right. I'm the one that covers. We need to make sure we're in a right way. Amen. In this time. By the faith of the Lord, we do. And, and just staying in the word, as Sharon was saying, it's important we read the word every day and just love God and just say, God, thank you for your word. Even if you if you've believed in the past, you know, well, I can't understand the Bible very much. Listen, he calls us to believe his word. You believe God's word and you read it and you'll see similar things to what you're going through. God will reveal to you what his word means by experience. And here right here in, in one Kings 17. You see the story of Elijah. Here's Elijah. comes out of nowhere. He goes right to Ahab. The northern ten tribes were worshipping. They had two golden calves built. And they were bowing down to the calf. They were worshipping Baal. They were worshipping all these false gods in the land of Israel. Okay. And then after he talks to uh, Ahab, Elijah does. The Bible says in verse 3, chapter 17, verse 3 of 1 Kings. Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. Hide thyself by the brook Cherith. Now, he just, he just told 
Ahab, there's not going to be any rain, okay, for three years or whatever, he told him. Okay, he said, let me read verse 1. And Elijah the Tishbit, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel, verse 1, chapter 17, liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. And he sat there. How long did it take for the brook to dry up? Probably about a year. Maybe a, a little less than that. Maybe a little more than that. But he sat there alone. Elijah. Mm -hmm. Okay? The Bible says, the scripture reveals to us that Elijah was a man of like passions as we are. He went through doubts. He went through fears. He was went through discouragement. He, he had all these things in his life. But yet he was still God's man. Mm -hmm. And he did what God said. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then, okay, in verse 7 it says, And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. See? He, he arose and went to Zarephath. And we know the story. The, the, the wheat didn't run out, the flour didn't run out, the oil didn't run out, and he, he was sustained. Why? He was obedient to the Lord. He said, yes, Lord, and he went to the widow of Zarephath. And this I, I find interesting in this verse at 9. <coughs> I have commanded. Oh, in verse 9, okay. I have commanded, appointed. That's right. what that word means. I have commanded. A widow woman there to sustain thee. Amen. In other words, to nourish thee, to provide what he needed in the natural realm. Right. He had commanded this widow woman right. to do this. That's right. He does the same thing today. That's exactly right. He does it. That he commands people to nourish and sustain the man of God. Right. The work right. of God. He That's does right. the same thing today. Amen. Now this little widow woman, I I doubt she had a whole lot of money or anything, but she whatever she had, she gave it. That's right. Because God commanded her to do this. That's right. And he, she never ran out. No. <laughs> he appointed her Praise to do God. this. Hallelujah. Just like he appoints different things for all of us. Hallelujah. Now, when you get to chapter 18, you have the story of the, the sacrifice, okay? Elijah had the hoedown, the showdown with the prophets of Baal. And they were, they they had an agreement. They are both going to put a sacrifice on an altar. And there's not going to be any fire set underneath. And whoever answers by fire, let him be God. And so... They were cutting their cells and they were dancing and they were crying out to Baal and they couldn't. And Elijah said, well, maybe he's on a vacation or maybe he's <laughs> sleeping, whatever. Keep You may have better yell a little louder, fellas, you know. And mm -hmm. they kept going and going and going. So time toward the evening sacrifice. Well, what did Elijah do? First, he told them, I want you to get some water. So they went and got water. Twelve buckets, twelve big deals of water. Poured it all over the wood, all over the sacrifice. Filled up the trench with water around the, the altar. They, I mean, it was totally soaking wet so that they would know, okay, this is the Almighty God. This is Yahweh, okay? And so we know the fire came down. And what did the fire do? Well, it, it licked up all the water. It licked up the burnt up the sacrifice, all the wood, and the rocks, okay? It, 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 it burnt up the rocks. I'm it, this was a fire, okay? Mm -hmm. It came down, okay? And I'm telling you right now, the fire is coming down, see? As we prepare the sacrifice, which is what? Ourselves. Mm -hmm. We say, Lord, I, I want to be right with you. Lord, I want to be right with you. And the Lord knows our hearts. He's not deceived by anything, okay? God sees us, you know? He knows what he got to do in me. 
He knows what he's got to do in Sharon. He knows what he's got to do in you, you see, to get us to the place of fuller surrender so we walk with him in white. We say, yes, Lord, no matter what. But the fire comes down, see? Hallelujah. Um, I got holy bumps. Now, what happened after that? Well, here we go again. Elijah, alone, yet not alone, see? He heard Jezebel's going to kill him. Oh, what did he do? He took off, shoo, ran, sitting under the juniper tree. He's just sitting there. <sighs> He's breathing hard because he ran from Jerusalem, okay? He's down in the south now. And and what happened? The angel said, get up, Elijah, eat the journey. So the angel had a meal right there for him. See, he wasn't alone, see? Mm -hmm. He was alone, but he wasn't alone. And then he went back to sleep, and then the angel said, get up and eat. And he ate two meals that day. He said, now, you need the strength. So he went 40 days into the wilderness to Mount Sinai, okay, where Moses had went. And he went in there, and he was in a cave. And then the Lord came to him and visited him. But not in the fire, not in the wind, not in the water. You see what I'm saying? But in the still, small voice, God came to Elijah. See, the still, small voice. That voice so frightened him, he got up and went out into the front of the cave. He was like looking back in the cave. You know, that <laughs> voice was, Elijah, what are you doing here? See, and God wants to visit his people with that still small voice even today. And what happened? Well, he said, you go do this and this and this and anoint this guy and do this with Elisha. You know, make him prophet in your room. And then you have the story over in Second Kings chapter 1. And Elisha, here he is sitting on top of the mountain. He's just sitting there all alone. All alone, and as a high as a high, uh, I can't even pronounce that king's name. But he fell down and broke his neck. He was really in a bad way. Okay, and he said, you know, go to the gods of Baal. You know, go to the, the get that. I got to find out if I'm going to live. And so on his way, Eli they see Elijah. So Elijah meets him. Okay, and so he said, what did he look like? He said, well, he had a camel hair, he had leather underwear on, and he, that's Elijah the Tishman. Ah, the king was freaking out. So. What happened? Well, Elijah was afraid, see? Elijah was alone. He was afraid. And how do you know that, John? Well, it says so in the Word, see? The, the, he sent three captains of 50, and the third guy, well, the, the first two and their 50 were totally killed, okay, by the fire of God, by the fire and the fire of God. And so the third guy said, please have mercy on me. Please have mercy on me. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. And the Lord spoke to Elijah and said, go down with him. Do not be afraid. He told Elijah that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So God is not going to tell Elijah the prophet to not be afraid if he wasn't afraid. Okay. Are you afraid today? The Lord says, do not be afraid. Do not. No matter what you're looking at right now in your life, God says, do not be afraid. I am with you. Amen. You know, the Lord wants to show his glory in his fire. Mm, hallelujah. I was thinking about when Elijah, <coughs> you know, he was proving God's power there. Yeah. Whenever well, he, was he actually, didn't even use anything right. except water. You know? Yeah. So in that other example. You, you're talking about the sacrifice. Okay, yeah, yeah that's, right, that's right. That, that he was going to prove God to be God mm -hmm. in what was going on there. That's right. You know, and... When that fire came down, it consumed everything. And that's what God's fire does. It consumes everything that's not of Him. Mm -hmm. And His fire is going forth in this earth right now. Consuming Amen. Amen. all that's not of Him. That's right. Amen. See, in this instance, what I was just talking about, I have to mention this, and I'm glad you said that. Uh... When Elijah said, if I'm a man of God, he was having doubts. Right, See, right. If I'm a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50. Well, they Bam! were trying to throw it on him. Right. Throw it on him that he wasn't a man of God. Right. See, And then the second guy with his 50 came. And Elijah said, again, if I'm a man of God, let fire come down from heaven. And the word says, and the fire of God came down. So it was mm -hmm. a larger fire. Mm -hmm. And God's trying to show Elijah, you're my man, Elijah. You're my man. See, Elijah didn't have power in himself. It, the power was because he was God. related mm -hmm. to God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He was being used of Almighty God. This is powerful now. 
see and the power was flowing through him okay from God and he was alone God told him don't be afraid he was afraid but what happens in chapter 2 chapter 2 here's Elijah he's one he's alone but what happens this guy I mean we we can't imagine how he felt I mean we really can't but we can a little bit because we have emotion too and he was a man of like passions as we are but here he is God says now go get Elisha and he goes and gets Elisha and they're walking and we know the story those guys say don't you know the Lord's gonna take your master away from you today he says be quiet hold your peace you know I'm staying focused I'm going with Elijah I'm walking with him okay and they go to the Jordan River and Elijah hits the river and it parts and it goes across and they're just walking and he says to Elisha he says what do you want what do you want me to do you know he says I want a double portion of your spirit and Elijah says if you see me when I leave you'll get it and so all of a sudden here comes the fiery chariot see I'm gonna read that let me read that in chapter 2 of uh, I'll just get to that part right here powerful right here and it, verse 9 chapter 2 of 2nd Kings and it came to pass when they were gone over that is over the river Jordan that Elijah said unto Elisha ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee and Elisha said I pray thee that a double portion of thy spirit be upon me and he said thou hast asked a hard thing nevertheless if thou see me when I am taken from thee it shall be so unto thee but if not it shall not be so and it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven mm. Hallelujah. he was alone but not alone you see <laughs> I'm telling you mm -hmm. God is able to so enrapturous in the spirit where I'm telling you right now I have had dreams in my life God has given me dreams on several occasions where in the dream in the dream I am like 50 feet tall standing there 50 feet tall just getting taller and taller and taller in the dream and all the enemies and all the stuff is just little bitty it's just like a little bitty ant down there I'm telling you <laughs> I've had dreams like that see and because as we as we focus on the world and the things in the world they get, they big. get bigger and bigger yeah. and bigger see but as you focus on God those things get littler and littler and littler and you know that God has you and you know you have faith to believe God is using you hallelujah see the lie of the devil is God can't use you God's not gonna use you look at you you're just a this or that or blah 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 you see or the devil one of his favorite things to to those saints today he comes as look at you you're all alone nobody cares about you that is a lie from the pit of hell you see Jesus Christ cares about you Amen. we care about you okay and we know many of you care about us and we know the Lord cares about us see so we're not alone praise God but we are alone see I mean you could go to the store today and feel just alone but you're not alone there's a lot of people in the store right see okay but then the Lord will whisper to you, talk to that little lady over there. You just go over and start talking to her, see? And God wants to bless her with a word. Or, or God wants her to bless you with a word. Hallelujah. I remember one time I worked at Kroger when I was 17. And uh, 16 or 17, I worked at the Kroger supermarket. And I started helping this old lady. And I, I could help her. I, could, I knew where everything in the store was. I was, a, I was helping everybody in the store. And this little old lady was over there by the onions or something, and she started talking to me, and I started talking to her. She said, you want to get an onion that's skinny, not a big bulb, but one that's flat because they're sweeter. That's what she told me. I said, oh, okay. And I remember that to this very day. You see? <laughs> to this very day. Okay? And so when we go pick out onions, that's what we find. Huh? <laughs> Is that right? Right? We hardly ever buy a single onion. We just get that little pack. So whatever's in there, we get it. But we praise God for that, right? Yeah. God is faithful, saints. 
Alone? Yet not alone. Hallelujah. See? Amen. Amen. The Lord says, Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. See? I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's what Jesus says. And he hasn't left us. He hasn't forsaken us. He's not going to. And it don't matter how it looks. What matters is that he put in us his spirit. He saved us. We believe his word. We walk in white robes today. The righteousness of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for a breakthrough today, Lord. For crushing the devil down under the feet of your people. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are the holy God, the mighty Lamb. Hallelujah. The Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, holy, holy, holy one of Israel. We bless you and glorify you today. For your name is mighty. Your name is awesome. Hallelujah. Your name is the name above all names, Lord Jesus. And we worship you today and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, you know every individual right now who's hearing, hearing this message or groups of people, whoever. You know Sharon and I. Lord, you know your people today. Lord, speak to all of us today. Deep in the recesses of our hearts. Let us hear your voice as never before, Lord. Let us receive revelation from your throne in a way, Lord, that will just absolutely transform us, O oh God, more and more into your holy, precious image. Keep us in the narrow way, O oh God, and help us to walk with you today, submitting to you. Submitting to one another, Lord. Hallelujah. Loving and praising you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And loving our neighbor as ourself. Hallelujah. And crush the devil's serpent under our feet in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to the King. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once again, our email address. If you want a copy of this devotional, Streams in the Desert, you can just write us at the King's Road 2000 at gmail.com the king's road 2000 at gmail.com the lord bless you today keep you make his holy face shine upon you the lord our god lift up his holy countenance upon you grant you peace the lord be gracious unto you oh hallelujah hallelujah his name which is his authority his character who he is be in and upon you today and fill you to overflowing with the river of life in jesus name Amen. Glory to the King. God bless you all. Hallelujah.